Now guys, I'm giving a, another few minutes to let the stragglers come in. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to begin. Uh, just let me check one thing first.
Right, so let's start with the alcohols. Let's start with the alcohols. Right, the alcohols have a general formula of CN H2N plus 1 OH. The functional group is the OH group, which is not, which is often at the end, not normally, but often at the end. The OH group is called the hydroxyl group. OH minus, as in NaOH, is, so is the hydroxide group. It's a hydroxide group. So don't confuse the two. Yeah. Right. Now, the OH group is polar, with the oxygen being delta minus and the hydrogen being delta plus. This makes alcohols soluble in water because of the polar OH group. Water is polar, OH is polar, hydroxyl is polar, therefore alcohols dissolve in water. Um, so the boiling points of alcohols are higher than corresponding alkanes for example ethanol has a much much higher boiling point than ethane why is it that higher boiling point? Because the hydroxyl group being polar leads to hydrogen bonding. Right. How do we make alcohols? Well, we can make them in lots of ways. We can make them naturally by the fermentation of glucose. C6H12O6 equals 2C2H5OH. Um, C2H5OH and 2CO2. We call this fermentation or anaerobic respiration. The two things are the same. You need to know this equation for biology as well as for chemistry. So it's a good one to learn. Industrially, we make it by the hydration of ethene, which is essentially the opposite to the way that we made ethene. Right? And the equation for that is C2H4 plus H2O equals C2H5OH. And remember that when we made it, it was called elimination. This is not called elimination. This is hydration. And then... Here is an alcohol, right? It's got OH, that makes it an alcohol. It's got three carbons, so it's propanol, but it's called propanol because the OH is attached to a carbon and that carbon is only directly attached to one other carbon. So this is what we call a primary alcohol. The carbon to which the OH is attached is connected directly to just one other carbon. In simple terms, if the OH is at the end, it's a primary alcohol. But you need to know what primary means. It means that the carbon to which the OH is attached is only attached directly to one other carbon. This, on the other hand, is, again, it's an alcohol, it's OH, it's got three carbons, so it's propanol, but it's different to this propanol insofar as the OH is not on the first carbon, it's on the second carbon, doesn't matter from which side you count, right? It's not in the first carbon. It's a secondary alcohol, 
and that the definition there is, it's a secondary alcohol, the carbon to which the OH is attached is connected directly to two carbons. So it's a direct connection to two carbons. This one is called propan 2 all. It's called propan 2 all. Right? Propan 1 all, propan 2 all. Now, combustion of alcohols. We talked earlier about the combustion of alkanes and how you had to be able to write equations for those. Well, combustion of alcohols is another one where you will be expected to be able to write balanced equations for the combustion of the first four alcohols. So let's start with methanol. The process is the same as with the hydrocarbons. You put plus O2 equals CO2 plus H2O because they all burn to give carbon dioxide and oxygen by combining with oxygen. So we put that down. Then, having done that, having done that, we Sorry, I went too fast there. There's one carbon here, one carbon there. We do the carbons from left to right. Then we do the hydrogen. Three and one makes four. Two here, so I need to put a two there. And then we've got one, two, what, one, um, two oxygens here and two oxygens there. That makes four oxygens, so we need two here. No, we don't need two here. We've got one here already, so we only need one and a half here, right? 1.5, right? If, if you've got two or two, it's because you forgot to count the oxygen in the alcohol. Don't forget that. Let's go on to the next one, right? So there you are, right? Don't forget the oxygen in the alcohol, right? Here is ethanol. Again, we write down plus O2 equals CO2 plus H2O. We have two carbons here. We have one carbon here, so we put a two in front of that. That gives us two and two. We have five and one, six hydrogens here. We have two here, so we need three of these. We need three of these to give us balance the number of hydrogens. And now we have got two twos are four, three ones are three, four and three make seven, but I've got one here, so I only need six more oxygens so I put a three there. Again, if I move on to propanol, again, I do exactly the same thing. Plus O2 equals CO2 plus H2O. Three carbons here, so I need three carbon dioxides. Seven and one is eight hydrogens, so I'll need to have four waters. Three twos are six and four is 10 oxygens but I have one here already, so I only need nine. To get nine, I need four and a half here. And then finally, um, butanol. Again, put down plus O2 equals CO2 plus H2O. Four carbons, four carbon dioxides. Nine and one is 10 hydrogens. Five H2O makes 10 hydrogens in that side. And then I've got four twos are eight, eight and five is 13. Take away one there, 12, so I need six O twos to give me the 12 that I need. Sorry for those guys who were waiting in the waiting room. Right, we're going to C5H11OH, C5H11O pentanol, same story. Exactly the same story. So make sure that you can do these things. It is important. Right, oxidation. Right? If you oxidize a primary alcohol by reacting it with acidified dichromate, Cr2O7 2 minus, that is dichromate to form aldehydes by oxidation. So primary alcohols react with acidified dichromate to form aldehydes, and this is an oxidation reaction. Secondary alcohols react with acidified dichromate to form ketones. Again, this is oxidation. Acidified dichromate is the 
oxidizing agent. During this reaction, the dichromate will change color from orange to green. If it's the oxidizing agent, that means it is reduced. So if you're asked to explain the color change, which is possible, although we don't do the experiment, you're still supposed to know the color change. The answer has three bits, orange dichromate, or orange acidified dichromate, if you want to be absolutely safe, is reduced to green chromium-3. So that's oxidation of alcohols. Right? Alcohols react with carboxylic acids to form an ester plus water. Right? So here we have C2H5OH, which is ethanol. Here we have HCOOH, which is methanoic acid. It ends in COOH, so it's an, a carboxylic acid. It's only got one carbon, so it is methanoic acid. Right? Now, if you see that, here we have HCOO, that's this bit here, right? and then C2H5. This is called ethyl methanoate. Ethyl methanoate. The ethyl comes from the parent alcohol. The methanoate comes from the parent carboxylic acid. But when we write the formula, we put the carboxylic acid first formed by the alcohol. I will make these presentations available to you. I'll tell you tomorrow exactly how to get them and download them, um, plus a lot more. In this case, if you click here, you can go and see this in detail. At the moment, I'm not concerned with the detail, so I'm going to leave that just now. Right? So this compound here is called ethyl methanoate. It is a substitution reaction. That's a substitution reaction. Right? The H of the alcohol is replaced by the methanoate group. Right? The H of the alcohol is replaced by the methanoate group. Right? It can also be called a condensation reaction. Why can it be called a condensation reaction? Because a larger molecule is formed when two functional groups combine to form a larger molecule with the elimination of water or indeed some other small molecule. It could be sodium hydroxide as we saw in the case of making soap. That was alkaline hydrolysis. Right? Coxal furic acid catalyzes the reaction by acting as a dehydrating agent. What do we use esters for? Well, we use them to produce ethene. We can use them as a beverage. Um, we can use them to make ethanoic acid and esters. Um, we can use them as solvents. That should not be that. Sorry, guys, there's a mistake. My goodness. We're talking about alcohols, aren't we? Yes, we are not aldehyde. Right. So we can use them to produce ethene as a beverage to make ethanoic acid and to make esters. We can use them as a solvent when you get your Tommy Hilfiger aftershave or perfume or whatever. The alcohol is the main solvent there. Short chain ones are soluble in water due to the polar hydroxyl group. Long chain ones are less soluble in water because the non-polar part is a bigger proportion of the molecule. So that's the alcohols. Now we move on to the aldehydes. Right, the aldehydes, the functional group of an aldehyde is CHO, CHO. So as soon as you CHO at the end of a molecule, you know it's an aldehyde. Right, there's the structure there. We've got the R, C double bond O, H. This is the carbonyl group. This is delta minus, the oxygen is delta minus, the carbon is delta plus. Oxygen delta minus, carbon delta plus. Right? The R, this R, can be a hydrogen or it can be an alkyl group. Aldehydes are made from primary alcohols by oxidation. 
Short chain ones are soluble in water due to the polar carbonyl group. You've heard this a hundred times. If I say it often enough, it might stick. Right? The first member is methanol, which is also known as formaldehyde. The formaldehyde, the form bit coming from formic acid, which can be made from it. Um, it can be reduced to a primary alcohol using hydrogen with a nickel catalyst and heat. There are other methods which I mentioned to you before, but let's just stick with the, this one. Right? Aldehydes are reduced to primary alcohols by using hydrogen, H2, that's hydrogen gas, a nickel catalyst, and heat. You can also use a copper catalyst. What do we use aldehydes for? Well, we use them as solvents. Um, we use them as preservatives. Methanol or formaldehyde is a preservative for organics, uh, for living specimens, for animal and plant specimens. It's horrible stuff. It stinks. It's quite poisonous. It's pretty nasty stuff, and it's not tends not to be used very much now. All right. The next group are the ketones. Now, the ketones have got a CO in the middle. They've got a CO in the middle. In this case, the R group has to be an alkyl group. That's a CH3, C2H5, 33H7, etc. And the difference between R and R dash is, well, R and R dash can both be the same alkyl group or they can be different alkyl groups. And again, it's got the carbonyl group, right? oxygen delta minus, carbon delta plus, in the, but the carbonyl group is in the middle, whereas in an aldehyde, the carbonyl group is at the end. Right? So R and R dash are alkyl groups, may be the same or they may be different. Ketones are made from secondary alcohols by oxidation. Acidified dichromate is the oxidizing agent. And again, you could be asked to state and explain the color change. Orange, acidified dichromate is reduced to green chromium three. Three bits there, the orange dichromate is reduced to second part, green chromium three, third part. Right. Unlike aldehydes, ketones do not oxidize further. Aldehydes will go on to become carboxylic acids, but ketones will not. Short chain ones are soluble in water. Why? Due to the polar carbonyl group. The first member is propanone. If these two R's have to be carbons with alkyl groups, then the shortest this can be is three carbons long. It's got C double bond O in the middle, so it's an own. Which own is it? Well, this one at the simplest will be propanone. Propanone is known as acetone. Acetone is what you would know as nail varnish or nail polish remover. Right? So it's a solvent, that's one of its main uses. And that's pretty much all you need to know about ketones. Carboxylic acids. Right? The functional group of carboxylic acids is COOH. COOH will be at the end. When you see that, you know it's an oic acid. Right? Which oic acid is it? Well, it depends on the number of carbons, but don't forget and count this carbon. Right? So we've got R, C, double bond O, OH. C, double bond O, the carbonyl group, is polar. And the OH group is polar. So these are polar molecules. Again, there's hydrogen bonding involved. Again, they're soluble in water because they're polar. So there's a whole lot of things that come of it. Carboxylic acids are made from primary alcohols. But the primary alcohol becomes an aldehyde, and then the aldehyde becomes a carboxylic acid. The most obvious one is ethanol becomes ethanol, becomes ethanoic acid. Ethanol, <coughs> pardon me, in wine becomes ethanol, and that can become ethanoic acid, wine vinegar. So that's how wine vinegar comes about. Right? And again, what do we use? We use dichromate, 
H+, which is another way of saying acid, and dilute sulfuric acid is the one we actually use, and a little bit of heat. Again, the colour change, state and explain the colour change. Orange dichromate is reduced to green chromium-3. Although you don't have to know how to make carboxylic acid, you have to know the colour change that will occur. The first member of the carboxylic acids is methanoic acid, ant and nettle stings. Right? They form esters when reacted with alcohols. Right? A carboxylic acid can be turned back into an aldehyde by reduction. It can be reduced to an aldehyde using hydrogen, nickel catalyst and heat. We've had this already with, with, with the ketone going back to a secondary alcohol. Uses and if we, if we, well, uses of carboxylic acids are condiments, vinegar, preservatives, vinegar, and benzoic acid, um, cellulose acetate film. We've actually mentioned these previously. Right? And then finally, the esters, right? they've got a, a C double bond O in the middle of the molecule, a C double bond O in the middle of the molecule. R can be a hydrogen or an alkyl group. R dash has to be an, aldi, a, 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 an alkyl group. Right? So, Esters are what give us fruity smells and fruity flavours. They're made by a substitution or a condensation reaction, substitution being the preferred name, between a carboxylic acid and an alcohol. Right? They're what give wine its flavour and its taste, especially red wines. Um, uses of esters, well, solvents, flavours and scents are the most common uses of esters. So, hydrolysis. Hydrolysis is a type of reaction that occurs all over the place, especially in nature. Digestion is all about hydrolysis. Um, so, what is hydrolysis? It's the breaking up of a bond, and thus a molecule, by adding water or some other small molecule, usually it's water. The name comes from hydro, meaning water, and lysis, meaning bursting or splitting. So you use the water to split a molecule apart. Soap is made by the base or alkaline hydrolysis of a triester, that's a fat or an oil, using sodium hydroxide, which is an alkali. Digestion is mainly hydrolysis. Right? So here we've got a large molecule, and this molecule is split by putting in water. H goes to one side, and OH goes to the other. Right, so that's hydrolysis. Now we're going to talk about other types of reactions. Um, because reaction types are important. Now, if I can remind you about the organic synthesis sheet that I gave to you, I think, last day. Right, reaction types. Right, well, the most common reaction type is oxidation. Right, it's the addition of oxygen into a molecule. Or, since hydrogen is, is in many ways, the opposite of oxygen. Instead of adding oxygen, we can remove hydrogen. Um, the substance that causes either of these things is called an oxidizing agent. Obviously, there are other definitions of oxidation. Oxidation, essentially, the all-encompassing definition is a loss of electrons. Right? Now, if I take Ethanol, here's ethanol, and I react it with dichromate and acid. I'm not thinking about the balancing, just what each compound is. I get ethanol, chromium-3, so the orange dichromate is reduced to green chromium-3, um, and ethanol becomes ethanol. 
And if you look here, there are five and six hydrogens here. There are only four hydrogens here. So this oxidation is but caused by the removal of hydrogen, turning six hydrogens into four. The two hydrogens, of course, go off as water. And if I go to, I take ethanol, and I turn it into ethanoic acid. In ethanol, I've got one oxygen. In ethanoic acid, I've got two oxygens. So the addition of an oxygen from one to two, that is oxidation, that is oxidation two. Right? There are other definitions of oxidation, loss of electrons or increase in oxidation number. But loss of electrons is actually the key one. But here I'm just showing you that these are oxidation reactions, but for different reasons. Right, the opposite of oxidation is reduction. Reduction is the removal of oxygen from a molecule, or it's the addition of hydrogen into a molecule. The substance that causes this is called the reducing agent. Reducing agents are oxidized. And if I take an aldehyde and I, re I reduce it back to a primary alcohol right, using hydrogen, a nickel catalyst and heat, here I've got four hydrogens, here I've got six hydrogens. So that's the addition of hydrogen. And then if I've got um, propanone and I react it with hydrogen, I get propan two all, I've got three and three, six hydrogens, I've got three and three, six and one, seven and one's eight hydrogens here. Um, that's, again, addition of hydrogen, right? Remember, ketones form secondary alcohols when they are reduced, right? It's the addition of hydrogen. I'm just going to change that ever so slightly when I'm here. That should really be red. There we go. Right, okay, the next type of reaction I want to talk to you about, one we've dealt with already, addition reactions. A molecule is broken up and inserted across a double bond, turning it into a single bond. You have to know the mechanism of that particular reaction. For example, chlorine with ethene. Right? Uh, or it can happen with a triple bond, turning a triple bond into a double bond. Then you can add in two more things. So that way we can use build up molecules. Some examples, right? C2H4 plus H2 equals CH3, CH3, that's ethane, right? CH3, CH3, C2H6, ethane, right? Ethene plus chlorine gives me one, two dichloroethane. Ethene plus hydrogen chloride gives me chloroethane. Ethene plus water gives me ethanol. Ethene plus hydrogen will give me ethene. And ethene plus hydrogen chlorine will give me chloroethene. And I can then use chloroethene to make polychloroethene or PVC. All right. The other type is substitution. Again, you need to know a reaction mechanism to go with this. And what is this? It's exchanging atoms, an atom or atoms of an organic molecule for some other species. Examples, well, I can have methane plus chlorine gives me chloromethane and hydrogen chloride. One hydrogen and chlorine has been exchanged, one hydrogen and methane has been exchanged for a chlorine from Cl2. Right? Or I can take CH3COOH and CH3OH and I can switch the OH for a OCH3. Okay, I swing it round, doesn't matter, it's still the same thing. Right? So the OH here is replaced by the CH3O. Here's the CH3O, I just happened to have put the oxygen first, it doesn't matter, and 
H2O. So OH and methanoic acid is exchanged for OCH3 from the methanol. So that's substitution. Right? And then elimination. We've had elimination. It's the removal of water or some other small molecule with the formation of a double bond. Right? And the, with the formation of a double bond is essential. Right? Dehydration of ethanol to form ethene. Right? So that's one example of elimination. Right? There's ethanol. We dehydrate it. We take away an H2O. We take away the OH and one of the H's. And what we get is we get ethene. We get the formation of a double bond. It was a single bond. Now it's a double bond. And we also get water. And then condensation reaction. Right? Now, again, the removal of water or some other small molecule with the formation of a more complex molecule. Right? The formation of an ester. Right? So we've got R, C double bond, O, OH. That's the carboxylic acid. And we have ROH, okay, I've written it as ROH, I've written it from right to left, but it's still the same thing, right? That's an alcohol, and what happens is the H and the OH break off from one, that goes over, with the green and red bits have swapped places, right? So that's what we call substitution, but we can also call it condensation because we've got a more complex molecule with the formation of a small molecule such as water. So you can call it either there. You can call it substitution or you can call it um, um, condensation, even dehydration if you want. Right? Protein synthesis is a natural example of condensation reactions. And then there's hydrolysis, we've talked about this before, the addition of water or some other small molecule, for example, sodium hydroxide into a compound, causing it to split into two or more simpler molecules. Digestion is a natural example of hydrolysis. Examples of hydrolysis, there we have, um, we have methyl, ethanoate and water gives us ethanoic acid and methanol, right? Then we, that's called acid hydrolysis. Um, and then we have alkaline hydrolysis where we have glycerol stearate with sodium hydroxide gives us glycerol and sodium stearate, soap making, right? That's alkaline hydrolysis. So hydrolysis is splitting up, right? by putting in H and OH or some other small molecule. In this case here, it's Na and OH, right? Now, some definitions that you need to know. And remember that definitions are very, very important in your chemistry exam, both for getting marks directly and to help you to understand questions. So learn your definitions. Right. Let's look at a few questions from past papers to see the sort of things that you are asked. Right. Examine the reaction scheme and answer the following questions. Name the compound labelled A, C285Cl, that's chloroethane, that's chloroethane. And for that you got five marks. For each of the conversions, W, X, Y and Z, classify it as an addition, an elimination, or a substitution reaction. Only use those three things. Those are your three options. You can call some of them other things, but you must use those. Right, now, I'm just going to move. I don't know whether you can see this bit here, um, but I've just moved out the way. Um, so here's the thing. So, W, we're going from ethanol to ethene. 
We're taking out water and we're forming a double bond, so that is elimination for, num for W. Right? W is elimination. X, I'm going from ethene to ethane, ethene to ethane. That's an addition reaction by adding in hydrogen. Y, I'm going to ethene to chloroethane. That's adding in HCl, that's another addition reaction. And Z, I'm going from ethane to chloroethane. So I'm putting in a chlorine, that is a substitution reaction. I'm switching one of the hydrogens for a chlorine. So let's just check those out. W elimination, you get three marks for that. X addition, you get three marks for that. Y addition, three marks. And Z substitution, three marks. Describe with the aid of a label diagram how the conversion W right, may be carried out. And how the conversion W going from ethanol to ethene. So this is a little bit of a practical question in the th not in the practical section. All right. So to answer this, the diagram, the test tube must be horizontal with a delivery tube attached and the gas collected over water. You must label the water water. That those two things get you three marks. All right. So horizontal test tube, delivery tube collected over water. And then the Bunsen burner for heating or some indication of heating. Yes, I've got that. That's another three marks. Aluminium oxide or Al2O3 or alumina. You can call it any of them. You only have to know one. Yes, I've got that. Three more marks. Ethanol held at the end of the chest tube. Yes, I've got glass wool and ethanol in my diagram. So I get my extra three marks for that. And then... How would you test the product to show that it is unsaturated? Now, you see how that's two questions in the one piece. Watch out for that. Right? It's easy to miss one of those questions. Right? So just watch out for that in the, in the paper. It's used as a device to try and make you forget about bits. Right? So how would you test the product to show that it is unsaturated? Right? Well, you would shake it with bromine or bromine water, um, and it will go colourless or it's decolorized. NB, not, it will go clear. Right? It will become colourless. I always say with bromine, red-brown to colourless. Then you can't be faulted in any way. Right? D, the conversion labelled Z, the conversion labelled Z, is known to occur by a free radical mechanism. State three clear, clear pieces, three clear pieces of experimental evidence which support this mechanism, right? So that's worth 15 marks, five marks for each of them, right? If the ultraviolet is stopped, the reaction will slow down or it will stop or it doesn't occur. Um, the products such as butane, if you're using ethane, then you're going to get butane formed and the addition of a radical promoter such as tetraethyl lead will speed up the rate of the reaction. Right? So that's three of those at five marks each. Right. So study the reaction scheme and answer the questions that follow. Right. Name. The homologous series, one to which A belongs, A is an alkene, that gets you four marks, and to which C belongs, it ends in CHO, it is an aldehyde. It is an aldehyde. A is a hydrocarbon, therefore it's either an alkane, an alkene, or an alkyne. The general formula then is CNH2N, that makes it an alkene. In the conversion of B to A, right, the conversion of B to A is an elimination reaction. What two features of the elimination reactions are illustrated by this? Well, there's a loss of water or some other small molecule, or the, and then the second part is the formation 
of an unsaturated compound or the formation of a double bond. That mean, those two bits there mean the same thing. Right? And then C, name the reagent and the catalyst required to convert C to B. Right? So C to B, to go from an aldehyde to an alcohol, we have to reduce it. So we need a nickel catalyst, hydrogen and heat. And then D, draw the full structural formulas of B and C. Full structural formulas of B, there's B, the ethanol, and C, the ethanol. Right? So indicate any carbon atom in either structure that has planar geometry. Well, the only planar one is this one. And um, so that gets you another three marks. List the bonds broken in B and the bond made in, in C in the synthesis of C from B. Well, broken is a CH bond, right? Broken is a CH bond, the CH bond here. Where are we? There we are, the CH bond here and the OH bond here. And then made is a C double bond O. And then um, part E, oh, the, the, the broken ones are there and the main one is there. And then E. After carrying out a laboratory version of B to C, how could you test the product to confirm the formation of C, to show the formation of the aldehyde? Well, you can use heat it with failings or Tollens reagent, and it will either go from blue to red if you've used failings, or colorless to silver mirror if you've used Tollens. Don't get them confused, don't get them mixed up. And then finally, F, compound C is formed, as a metabolite of compound B in the human body. How does compound B get to be present in the human body? Compound B is ethanol. Well, the most common way it gets in is we drink it as a beverage, but it can be there as medicine and other things. Now, we're slightly over time. Um, so what I'm going to do is next day, I'm going to just finish off this last little bit for you, and then I'm going to do some stuff on stoichiometry, which is a huge topic. And I'm just going to pick a few little snippets from stoichiometry that people find difficult. Right? Stoichiometry, very, very important. So I'll see you guys um, tomorrow, same time, same place. Okay, thank you.